Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Earlier today I was reading an article on myfigurecollection.net and the article was titled, What is the hardest part about being a collector? And initially after starting to read this article, I found it a bit weird because I don't consider collecting to be hard or something that should be complained about. I consider it something to be fun, enjoyable, and oftentimes rewarding. So the premise of making an article about all the hardships about it just seemed kind of in poor taste to me. But I'm happy to say after I finished reading the article, I actually found it very relatable and it wasn't so much as someone saying, woe is me, you know, because collecting is a choice and really if you don't want to do it, then don't do it. But in this video today, I want to go over some of the author's points that I agreed with or didn't agree with and just how I related to the article as a whole. And so just before I begin, the article will be linked in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself because I want this video to be something positive, not just complaining about collecting um, because I really love it and I wouldn't be doing it if I thought it was hard. But here we go. So the first thing that was brought up in the article was about the family of the author not really understanding why they put so much money and time into collecting these pieces of plastic. And really this can relate to anything, um, but I'm just gonna be talking about figures today because I collect figures and kind of other stuff. So you can relate it to other stuff. Um, but basically they're more specifically their parents and their partner not really understanding why they do what they do And that's something that I can relate to very much I am the only person in my family that really likes anime or collects anything um, My family has this kind of outlook of a minimalistic household and so Anything that's clutter or something that they wouldn't want they would immediately like donate it or give it to someone else or chuck it out And so when my family see me and my room full of clutter and like Figures and things that I don't use on a daily basis It's very hard for them to understand why I'm doing what I'm doing and I know why I'm doing what I'm doing because I love it and it makes me happy and there's more kind of little things that I can go into about kind of preservation of things and, you know, fandom collecting specific characters that I love. Um, but it's not really a conversation that I care to have with anyone. It's just something that there was another quote in the article that I really related to. And it was, I will go into a deep depression if I'm not obsessing over the things I'm collecting. And I think that is just very relatable. <laughs> I've collected things since I was a kid and it's something that I've always loved doing. And I think if I didn't do it, I wouldn't truly be being honest with myself about who I am and what I love to do. Because people do far worse things than collecting and just because other people around you don't understand it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. And that brings me to kind of a similar point which was covered in the article about social acceptance and judgement from your friends and peers I guess. And I can't really relate to this but I can understand how it happens to some people. Um, personally, my collecting and the things that I do, you know, outside of friendship circles, it's just a very personal thing. And whether like a lot of my friends know about it or not, it doesn't really bother me. It's some, it's not something that I feel like I have to push out in the open. If they kind of see it and they know about it, well then that's cool. But one thing I will say is I believe people should take a no stance, um, on judgment from other people, because if your friends are honestly judging you about something you're doing that is really harmless and it's something that you love to do, you probably shouldn't be friends with those people in the first place. And like I said, outside of social media and kind of YouTube, I guess, I know no one that collects. Like I have no people in my real life circle that actually collect and I can relate to on that level. So all of my friendships are just through things we have in common or just through honestly liking the person because they are a good person or they're funny or they have good, you know, things about them. And I hope that that's what they think about me. You shouldn't really be judging people on what they're doing as a hobby or in their spare time because whether you like sports or gaming or anime or whatever, as long as it's something that's productive and it's something that doesn't take over your whole life and you kind of still have a life and that on the side, I think people shouldn't really care about that. Um, so that's what I wanted to say on that. Now, one of the biggest things that people seem to relate to in this article is to do with money and budgeting and just how much this hobby costs. And yes, I'm not going to deny it, whether you're just getting into figure collecting or you've been a veteran, eventually it comes to the point where quality and price are kind of going to have diminishing returns. And so what I mean by that is, 
you can start off getting into collecting with budget figures and stuff like that, but the more quality you want, the more money you're going to have to, and the more quantity you want, actually, the more money you're going to have, the more money you're going to have to put into the hobby. And that's tough because not everyone is rich out there. And I'm certainly not rich. I've been called rich um, in the comments of my videos because people see me spending, you know, $500, $1,000 on anime. But the real thing is I work for all the money. Every dollar I get, I work hard for. Like I have a physical labor job and it's not something that is an educated job. I don't earn a lot of money. I just work hard for my money and I haven't come from a rich family. I just simply delegate my money where I can because I have a certain income and I have a certain amount of expendable money and um, I do what I want with my money. So it would be great for everyone to be rich and have unlimited money to spend on their hobbies, but that's not the case. And yeah, like... I've had things I wanted to buy that I can't afford, and I think no matter how much money you have, you're going to run into that, because now there's figures that retail for $15,000 that are life-size, one-for-one scale statues, and who can afford these things? Personally, I can't really often ju justify spending two or $300 on a figure, let alone that amount of money, so wherever you are in your finances, it's going to come into play, and it's something that you just need to work out for yourself. Um, and do the best with your situation. Now, the second most popular thing which I, at the moment, am relating to the most is the trouble of having space to display everything. And even to just keep everything. When you're young and maybe you don't have your own house or, like me, I'm renting a small sort of place, I just don't have the space for as much stuff that I want to bring into. And over time, because now I've been collecting for several years, stuff just kind of accumulates and people deal with this differently. Some people uh, at certain parts of their, you know, collecting, they sell off stuff that they don't really care about. And other times, like with myself, you have to just make kind of sacrifices and say, well, I can't really display everything. So I'll display some of the stuff that I want to display. And sometimes I'll have to put stuff away until I can, you know, kind of build up to getting more, a bigger place. Um, and that's something I've talked about on the channel before, and I, it's just something I came to terms with that I don't have unlimited space or money, and I need to be very selective about what I buy and kind of make it relate to where I am in my life. But it's good to have goals, and I do have goals of one day having this massive collection area where I can display everything that I want, but the more time and money you invest in something, the more space you have to allow for that. And it's just something that you need to take into account, I suppose. And the final thing that I want to touch upon is they mentioned that collecting is a journey of constant learning, and I absolutely agree with that, because figure collecting, especially like Japanese anime figures or... You know, even Western figures, there's a lot of different jargon and terms that you just don't understand being a newcomer into the hobby. And it just takes time and experience to fully grasp and understand, you know, what some things mean, where to buy certain figures, what is a good price for figures, what to do in terms of pre-ordering versus waiting and how there's a lot of limited stuff. There's just a lot of things to take into account. And you're going to make mistakes, but... Like they said in the article, it's a constant learning journey and improving and improving and getting better will make you a better collector, I suppose. But the good thing is there are websites like My Figure Collection and to a lesser extent YouTube, you know, buying guides and stuff like that. I've actually made one in the past that can help you. Um, oh, and there's videos on, you know, how to identify bootleg figures. I've also made one of them because that is the biggest thing, in my opinion, that's plaguing kind of our community because I hate bootlegs and it's something that you shouldn't have to deal with, but newcomers don't understand this and they need to be educated on the matter. And so there's two last things that I want to add in just as my own little things that weren't covered in the article. And the first one would be the location of where the figures are made. And this one kind of pertains to me, but I suppose a lot of people can probably relate to it. Being in Australia, not a lot of stuff is available locally, and so oftentimes I have to buy from overseas, being Japan. And it's made even harder now that the government has implemented a 10% tax on the overall price, not just shipping, but the overall price that you have to pay to them. So now, if I want to buy something from Japan, 
let's say it's $100, I have to pay a 10% tax on that $100, bringing it up to $110. That's including shipping as well, which kind of sucks, but that's just something that's been implemented. And the final thing, I don't want to go too deep into this because I'm very passionate and fiery about this, but I just have this problem with a lot of resellers and people that are kind of holding onto their collections as hostage. I think that, and I've wanted to make a video on this for the longest time, but I think that collecting is a buyer's game, especially when it comes to secondhand figures or secondhand products in general. But I think that people buy something for a certain price and then they get this mindset where they don't want to let go of it for anything less or even worse they want to make a profit on it and I really believe that collecting shouldn't be this thing that you kind of do as an investment all the stuff around me like I've never once thought about what it will sell for how rare it will be in the future and to be honest I have probably dozens if not hundreds of things that I don't think I would make money on I'd probably lose money on a lot of my collection but I simply pay what I'm willing to pay for it at the time. I'm not one of those people who, let's say I buy a figure for $50 and then I have to sell that figure for 50, if not $70. I've had people tell me that figures, though this figure is going for $800 on eBay and it retailed for like $80. And I'm like, why does just because, I don't even know why, but just because there might be this demand, which I often think is inflated and artificial, why do I have to pay 1000% above what the thing retailed for brand new? It's like, it blows my mind, but there's going to be people that scalp things no matter what you're into. And these fake collectors that get into it just, be just because of the financial gain, which I think really doesn't exist. I think there's a few high priced items and things that are sought after, but the fact that the thing is people think every figure just because some figures go up in price and rarity, they think every figure should have that trend. And I really think that's a bad mindset and connotation to have, but I don't want to go too much into this because, yeah, I'm very passionate about this because I have dealt with some absolute pricks um, trying to sell me things before. Maybe I'll make a video on that another time. But anyway, guys, that was me relating to this article. As I said, if you want to check it out, the link will be in the description below. Um, thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next week's video, which will be the top 10 new figures of August um, coming out. So I know a lot of you guys enjoy those videos, so stay tuned for that. And if you're at Animaga next weekend, be sure to say hello. All right. All right. Bye.